Here I am in the place to be. Mr. K and B, you can't fuck with me. Extra sexy, extraordinary. Palms are hairy. Your mama pop. What up, yo? It's K and B, the sexy ninja for a paper saber universe. And welcome to the Sexy Ninja Cast, a podcast all about me, KMB. It feels good to say that out loud. And uh, I've already explained it on the New World podcast, the intro of, uh, I, I forgot what show. Some changes happened. Now we're in a paper saber universe. We're in my brain. We're in my brain here, folks. And I gotta say, this journey of podcasting has been like an up, and down and spiral road of like awesomeness, frustration, sadness, happiness, you know, trying to figure out where is my lane and where is my destiny. It's just been one of those things that I've been wrestling with uh, literally like for a past, the past year. And I'll take you on a quick little journey. And if you're new here, welcome. You know, I, I hope you continue listening on. The New World Podcast is not going anywhere. I just enjoy doing that. That's some therapy for me, but I needed to also get some creative juices out. And, you know, when we started, we were C Plus Studios. I did that Juggalo vlog. I did, because I love music. I, I, you know, I did, uh, we did the social event podcast, me and Big Daddy. And, you know, you can go listen to those. Those are all archived. And you can go check them out. They're not, they didn't go anywhere. I did Pop Flicks with Doug. Uh, you know, I did, um, some random ramens, uh, we like so much. I got a bunch of short films that I've made, you know, done. I got a documentary I did when I went to uh, Camp Zool, the very first annual Camp Zool, and I interviewed a lot of artists that I look up to, you know. And when we decided C Plus Studios was no more, you know, we stopped, and I wanted to find my lane. And I was like, okay, you know what? I want to commit to something, so I committed to the New World Podcast. I was like, all right, this is it. This is the road we're going, New World Podcast, change the logo, everything, names, and everything like that. So doing this, you know, we're like over 240 episodes in at this point. And I I, I love doing the podcast. Don't get me wrong. Like, I, I just want to get that across for some reason. Just get it across. I love doing that podcast. But, you know, when I went to movies with Doug and stuff like that, I was like, ah, I want to talk about The Flash and how much it fucking irritated me and pissed me off. You know, we go see another movie. Oh, I want to talk about this. And this is going on. Or I read something. I'm like, oh, I want to talk about this. But I was restricted under the name of the New World Podcast. And I like being goofy and doing goofy shit like I was doing on TikTok. And like, but I was like, ah, oh, it's all wrestling related now. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a box. I, I boxed myself in and you know, I, I, I've been going up and down and this and that. And I even considered like stopping doing, uh, the, just podcasts in general. And I've had a few, I had a few people, uh, talk me out of it. They're like, yo, don't quit. You know? And the biggest factors is, uh, uh, big daddy and Doug and a couple other people. But uh, those two, I, I've been talking about, I was like, yo, I, I think I'm just going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the mic down. I'm going to put the mic down. And they're like, what do you want to do? I was like, I want, I want to create more movies, short films. I want to make more podcasts about the, the shit I love, like, you know, uh, comic books and music and movies and stuff like that. You know, I want to go to more concerts and document that I want to do this. Then they're like, then fucking do it. <laughs> And, you know, another big factor in this is, is my homie Colin, man, my, my road dog right there. I mean, him been on the road together. We've been to Colorado. We've been to Ohio. Gort, and the next Gort Fest is coming up, and he, he, we're talking about saving up some money for it. And I was like, I was like, but it has nothing to do with the New World podcast. You know, then, then that, I was like, man, that, this all of this started call, uh, like just coming together, fusing together, and it, it was just such a weight on my shoulders. So... I, I was just like, damn. And then I, I started writing music. And I was like, I can't release this under the New World Podcast banner. You know, what, what am I going to do with this? You know, where, what what am I going to do with this new song? You know, and I'm, I'm working on an album slowly. I, I showed the cover to Colin. I've showed the cover to Penta. And, you know, Penta's been a big, uh, big person in my corner, too. You know, and everybody is just like, don't do it. You know, don't stop. You know, you got to keep doing it. So... 
One day I sat down after watching wrestling. And that was the funny thing too is like I've been watching so much wrestling. I felt myself getting a little negative here and there on shows. And I was like, damn. And every time my mom called, <laughs> every time my mom called, she could be like, hey, what are you up to? I was like, watching wrestling. She's like, you're always watching wrestling. And then she says something that made us both laugh. She goes, I want you to stop watching wrestling for a week. I was like, mom. I host a thing called the New World Podcast that's all about pro wrestling. So it's kind of hard to stop, the, you know, to do something like uh, watch wrestling and just, you know. And that was another thing is I was watching so much wrestling, but not watching Star Wars, not watching Batman, not watching this. And I like go to the movies with Doug and this and that. And I want to talk about it. And it, I felt so restricted to it. So one day I finally sat down and I was sitting there editing an NWP episode and I was like, you know what? I keep saying I want to do this. I want to do that. The only person in my way is me. And that's just been the biggest factor of my life. I have a lot of uh, mental issues of anxiety and this and that. You know, I, 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 I push myself because I want to be the best version of myself, the best dad, the best husband, best podcaster, best vlogger, whatever you want to call it, best entertainer. You know, and I've been like just trying to figure out what I want to do. So I pulled the trigger. I changed everything over to a paper saber universe where I am going to do what I want to do. You know, I'm going to create short films. I'm going to create music and release it on this uh, platform and stuff like that. And a paper saber universe comes from uh, the, the meaning behind it is as I was a kid, and, you know, I, I was broke. We were poor living on the res in uh, New Mexico on the Navajo Nation uh, res. You know, I, I want, I love Star Wars more than anything. Like that was, that was one thing that I loved so much. I, you know, I was on my tattooing and, you know, my mom and them couldn't afford to get me the actual like lightsabers, you know, that would be in the stores and whatnot. So in school, I would just take construction paper and make paper sabers, you know, and then, that's the, that's, that's where the name really comes from is that it was like, I, I created some, I, I, instead of being given the toy and then I play with the toy, I made the toy out of paper and my imagination ran wild. And I can look at, that's the analogy of my life. I take things and I create something that I feel is entertaining and dope. And so that's why, and then the universe aspect came from. I have created my own little personal universe with the New World podcast, you know, to the sexy ninja cast, to the short films, to the stories I'm still creating and writing, to the music I recorded. You can go check out that. They're all on the playlist. You can, I, I, more of a playlist on YouTube, uh, all archived. But I, I looked at my life. I even did a comedy special. I did all this, and this is the, this is the KMB. Like, everything's in this universe, in this ball. And if you saw the intro for this podcast, I was going down memory lane so hard. Like, it was just like, damn, I've been doing this for so long. There's so much footage documented and whatnot and so much mean. Yes, I'll get back on camera soon, you know. And and that was another thing. Like, that comes down to my weight issues. I'm fat. <laughs> I'm a fat man trying to live his life the best he could. So, you know, that's another aspect of my life I need to get together is just you know, that's why I generally stop being on camera. But, you know, I I was ashamed of my fatness in a sense, you know, because I and it's not to the not to the fucks that fat shame me before. You know, I've had people fat shame me on YouTube. I don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> you could fat shame me, you could tell me go eat a fucking piece of broccoli, you could fuck off as well too, because I don't care. I was more mentally in my own head about it. You know, and people who fat shame nowadays is fucking dumb. <laughs> you know, there's this thing coming out. I, if, if it's true, Lizzo is bringing out like this huge McDonald's bundle package with like a bazillion nuggets and bazillion burgers. And I'm just like, you go, girl. Fuck. You know, maybe I'll eat that. But then I'm like, hey, we're trying to control your your weight here. Don't go eat a bazillion nuggets. <laughs> and, you know, that. It's just one of those things I have to get out of my own head. And so when I pulled the trigger to do a Paper Saber Universe and reloaded the chamber and said, okay, here we go. Let's talk music. Let's talk movies. Let's talk, you know, let's talk. 
you know, not be restricted under the New World Podcast banner that I put myself in that box. Um, I was going through some really great stuff. We, um, I found this logo that me and Colin, we, we, we had a podcast idea. And I love Insane Clown Posse. I'm a juggalo. It's tatted on my arm. I can't hide it, you know. And it's funny. It's like, someone's like, oh, you don't mention the juggalo stuff anymore. But, you know, that's where the YouTube channel really, really started from was like, that, that juggle vlog, I started doing reviews and I love doing reviews and this and that. And that got a little carried out of hand because people would like give me the music, like, review this. I'm like, okay. And then they don't share it. And it was like, ah, you know, I got my own mental head about it. But it, deep down, like, you know, and that was the thing too is like everything I love outside of the world of professional wrestling was just being put on the side. I would get messages like, did you watch Secret Invasion? I'm like, no, I, I watched, you know, what's the same money in the bank. Oh, did you listen to this new album? No, I was listening to this uh, wrestling podcast so I can, you know, like criticize myself and how I want to do it. You know, my, my stuff. And then, like, oh, did you watch this movie? I'm like, no, I watched this wrestling show that took three hours of my time. Oh, did you, you know, and that's where I was looking at myself and looking. I, I was basically at this table. And th this this was all I was focusing on. And I look up and there's a bigger table with much more bigger things on there. And I'm like, oh, I want to connect these tables. Why? You know, so that's why now we're here. Welcome to a Paper Saber universe. The KMB. Uh, you're in my brain. The KMB. I was like, the KMB what? <laughs> you're, now we're diving into me creating more. You know, more content, more more things, you know, and me and my wife even talked about it. I was like, man, I want a ghost hunt, but I couldn't do it under one banner. Now that it's a Paper Saber universe, we can have some fucking fun, okay? And the Sexy Ninja cast is about all my passions and everything I love outside of professional wrestling. The New World podcast will remain what it is just because I, lo I, I love what I did with it. I love what I created. I, you know, and we did so many wrestling podcasts, variations, previous, you know, we had, a uh, uh, like on Patreon, we try to do and stuff like that. But then I created the sexy ninja cast and it became, I did some dope interviews here. You know, um, Kevin Eastman, DJ clay, uh, Jason, the sin God twice, you know, um, some other artists I was trying to get. And I had artists and some other people, actors, whatnot, reach out and like, Hey, do you want to do an interview? And I was like, is it about wrestling? You know, that <laughs> it's, uh, I missed opportunities like that. So now we're here and I'm excited and I, and I want to talk. And, you know, the biggest thing I remember, like, I think what really sparked my brain of like, man, I just want to talk about what I love was the flash. I went and saw that movie with Doug. I had my hopes up higher than anybody can like, like I, I, that was my movie this year. I am a huge DC fan, comic books and movies. I love the Snyderverse. I'm not crazy, like hardcore crazy Snyderverse people, but I've grown to love that universe and cherish it. Ben Affleck as Batman is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, you know, and I, I love this universe and we're saying goodbye to it with the flash. We're saying goodbye with the Flashpoint, you know, storyline. And I went into this movie hyped. And my wife's like, don't do it. You're, you're doing what you did with The Last Jedi. You know, you're, you're getting yourself overhyped. You're like, oh, my God, you know. And <laughs> that's exactly what happened. You know, we have Barry in the starting. You know, he helps Bruce. This building's collapsing. Batman's chasing uh, some uh, bad guys down. It's taking longer than I think it should. Then there's this weird baby scene. Babies play out throughout the whole fucking movie. There's a part where he goes to Michael Keaton's Batman's uh, Wayne Manor, and he's painting pictures of babies. And like, like if you really watch that movie, go watch that movie. If not, if you don't want to support Ez, Ezra, and that, I, I, I respect that. I, I 100 respect, 100 percent uh, respect that. I went in the mind frame of like, I want to see Barry Allen like go and try to f bring his mom back and stuff like that. That's what I was going for. I was going for the character of Barry Allen and seeing Barry Allen's journey and heartbreaking, the, the heartbreaking decision he needs to make to go through that journey. But then we, we, the movie starts and then with all the babies and I didn't give a fuck about the CGI. I've grown up with 
the rock in the mummy returns looking like shit. I've, I, if you know, people who come at me like, Oh man, the CGI was so terrible. I'm like, man, you should have watched spawn. <laughs> I've grown up with it to the point to where it doesn't matter about the CGI. You know, I, everyone's like, Oh, look, it still looks fake at the end of the day. Even if, even if it's as crisp as can be, it still is fake. So those things never really bothered me with CG, but these babies are falling and this scene was way played out. Barry's hungry and he's trying to, like, he's eating burritos and it's supposed to be this really funny thing, but it was not funny. This was the equivalent of Luke throwing the fucking lightsaber over his shoulder in the starting of The Last Jedi when Ray hands it to him. That's how I felt with this whole fucking scene. And then there's other things that I really love in this movie. You know, like there was the, the scene with his mom when he finally had to say goodbye. But I didn't like how we got to that point with like him like, oh, I could change the past. I could do this. And then Ben Affleck was in there for like five minutes. <laughs> and, you know, he there, there was another part of that in the starting movie when, ben, when uh, Ben's Batman talks. It's just Ben Affleck. I was like, whoa, what happened to the little voice changer thing? Like, you know, he had he had the little, like, the little like roboticness to it. Like he had a he had a Batman voice. And this one was like, nah, I'm here collecting my check. You know, wearing this uh, weird bat suit. Like, it was cool seeing the blue, gray, and black all come together. But it was, like, weird. Like, it looked as bad as um the, uh, Josh's uh, Josh's cut of Justice League and that big bulky fucking suit he wears at the end. You know, it makes him look, like, tough and strong and whatnot. But, yeah, and then, then we get Wonder Woman. I'm like, yeah! And then it was like, that's it. You know, then... <laughs> The, 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 basically, the last thing we get from uh, Ben Affleck's Batman is when he goes, uh, Barry's like, hey, you want to go out and eat? You know, after we save the day, this and that. I'm, I'm always hungry. And he goes, next time. And he leaves. I'm like, you dick. You could have just took him out for a pizza. <laughs> but the the movie overall, at the end of the day, I walked out of there and my friend and Doug was like, I liked it. You know, we're with our other friend, Cody. And I'm like, yeah, I liked it. And I was like, I, uh, I... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> even nostalgia or not, even Keaton's Batman was just like, I just feel like he's collecting a check. Like, you know, and what's with the weird, like, neckerchiefs and, you know, is that what they call them? Like, neckerchiefs? You know, well, well who, who thought, like, yo, older Bruce wears these in this universe? Then his whole e explanation of this, the, uh, uh, the multiverse with spaghetti the weird dark flash shit, you know, it was buried the whole time. I'm like, well, we could have done reverse flash, but okay, whatever. You know, I don't, I don't know shit, you know? And the, the, I was like, I'm going to see the treadmill now. But no, we got this weird ball sphere thing, you know, and this, uh, cathedral of whatever, the past, the future, all mixed and whatnot. And babies playing throughout. There's a part where, uh, where, uh, Barry talks in baby voice, you know, and that was so weird. I think, I think that's really set it off was the babies putting a baby in the microwave. How the fuck is that funny? Like, like I, I, you know, I understand what he was doing. Like they're like, no, he's like trying to save him from this, trying to do this, trying to do that. And Oh my God. Like going back to save his mom over a can of fucking tomatoes. So, you know, that when I was sitting, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? He's just, he's, so he's going to put a tomato can in the uh, while we were grocery shopping in the past, that's gonna keep his mom alive, keep his dad out of jail, and you know for some reason the killer won't show up because he'll see that can of tomatoes. And be like, oh shit, you got two cans of tomatoes. Husband was supposed to go out and get the command. <laughs> see you later. And Barry has his great life and double Barry, younger Barry. My fucking god, awful, fucking awful. I was like, why? You know, everyone sh shat on Jar Jar Binks, but I was like, this motherfucker's far worse. Young Barry, I, if he wasn't in this movie, he, ah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Keaton, and then wasting Supergirl. She got stabbed a bazillion times and whatnot. Spoilers if you haven't seen it, you know. It it just, and, we, you know, the, and, and Keaton's Batman dying, you know, just saying, hey, he's out. And you have fucking George Clooney show up at the end. I was like, and I heard Christian Bale was supposed to be that bat, like that one. Because Barry, Barry, once again, with tomatoes, changes the past. So, you know, because he's trying to get his dad out of jail for not killing his mom. And there's this 
Bruce gives him this footage and says, here, he's not looking up at the camera, so you really can't see his face. So when Barry goes back in time, says goodbye to his mom, very touching scene. And he puts the tomato can back. He looks at the camera and he changes the future butterfly effect butterfly effect of stuff puts the tomato cans on top so his dad can look up at the camera bada bing bada boom he's scot free he comes out then this courthouse scene was originally supposed to have wonder woman henry cavell superman michael keaton's batman sasha um um sasha kale i think it is her name is supergirl you know showing up and her and uh, Henry was supposed to fly off together and whatnot. They were all supposed to come here, but no, we didn't get that. He gets a call from Bruce, and Bruce, well, he's like, hey, you know, as soon as I heard his voice, I was like, his voice sounds so... Uh, like, the joke was there with, like, what? who the fuck are you? Like, you know, and I was like, that's cool. And the, the, the wasted mid credit scene with Aquaman being drunk, I don't know. I walked out of that movie like, man, I... You know, it was funny, too. The best part about this whole experience is me and... Doug, we're talking about it, and after that, the best part about it was I walked inside, and my wife's like, okay, tell me about the greatest movie in the world, and I was like, I, well, uh, and she's like, oh, fucking God, no, I am not living through The Last Jedi, where, uh, you know, because that did ruin two years of my life, <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, I was like, just, just let me, just let me just fill it out, she goes, okay, and I started like, rambling, I was like, fucking tomatoes, and I was like, ah, you know, babies, ah, ah you know, <laughs> she's like okay calm down young Barry ah you know so that was just an experience and it was funny it's like I wish I recorded right when I walked out of the theater but I was like too focused on like okay I I can't talk about this you know because it's you know it's not wrestling related and that was the box I put myself in um what else did I see uh Transformers fantastic I put that over the Flash movie in a heartbeat um, that, uh, the new Transformers is the shit. Spider-Man across the, uh, across the universe, uh, was the shit. And that was another thing. I was a fucking idiot. Okay. So if you go back and listen to old podcasts, I did not watch into, the, I've only watched like 10 minutes of Into the Spider-Verse. I was drunk and I got pissed. I was like, what did they do to the miles? Oh, fuck this. Five years later, you know, and I talked about that. I never went back and we watched it. And a, a, a good buddy, uh, a, a coworker of mine, he, he really pushed me. He's because he's a film major and everything like that. He really was like, hey, watch the first one, please watch the first one. And I was like, you know what? Fine. Got up really uh, butt ass early, sat down, watched the movie. The <laughs> first thing I text him, I'm a fucking idiot. And I think I text a few people that I was like, this is beautiful, amazing, everything I love about Spider-Man is in this movie. It took me five years to pull my own head out of my ass and watch this movie. And here comes the second movie, you know, um, and the best part, real quick story is, uh, you know, we, uh, rent's really high up in Flagstaff, Arizona. You know, I pay 1400 for a one bedroom, you know, that's, that, that's a lot. And there's other places that charge more. Yes. I think I were more grandfathered in, but you know, I want to do stuff and when I go to movies and, you know, and I went and like, I, the movie comes out. I didn't go see it that weekend because I was broke. Then the second weekend comes out, I went and saw another movie with uh, with uh, Doug and whatnot. And then another weekend comes by, and we like this and that. And then um, uh, my coworker, my buddy of mine, he was like, yo, did you see it? Did you see it? So, and then like the weekend I was going to see it, my wife got a gift card for her birthday, you know, a $50 gift card. And I had the worst luck with gift cards at Walmart. So I was like, oh, you need the groceries? He was like, yeah. So I had 50 bucks for the week. And I was like, all right. Spider-Man money. That's Spider-Man money right there with me and Doug. Go see Spider-Man. And I went to go to Walmart, went, swiped my card, and like it said, nope. And uh, I was like, what? It's a birthday gift. There's $50 on here. But we, they showed me the transaction history. They're like, yes, it was loaded on this date, and then it was uh, used on this date. And somewhere in Phoenix, that's not even where um, my, my, my father-in-law and mother-in-law live. Like nowhere near them was this card used and this card was I saw it then I was like oh I pulled out my debit and I gave it to them and they swiped it there goes fifty dollars go there goes spitter man money then then that night um we're at we're talking he's like hey so you're gonna go see spitter man uh on Monday I was like no he's like what I'm fu- I want to talk to you about this movie so you know what this ninja does do you know what this dude does he gives me money to go see the movie. Not only just for the ticket. But also some popcorn money. I was like dude. You serious? He's like 
yes, I am tired of coming into work and not talking this movie with you. I said, okay. He goes, you text me as soon as you see it. I was like, yes, dude, this is a lot. Thank you. Went to the movie, had a blast. It's a little bit, go- like anybody that has epilepsy should not go to this movie. There's a lot going on, um, uh, you know, I, but I still love the first movie more. This movie's fun, and this movie ends on a big cliffhanger. And funny thing about it is, like, if you've been if you've been following me for this long, you know I've had uh, foot problems. I've been having foot problems. I finally found out that I have a hairline fracture on my third toe, so that's where a lot of the bruising and all that's coming from. And the, the uh, you know, and I have arthritis cream now, which is funny because it makes me sound like an old man. But during the same time, when we finally got to go see Spider Man Across the Universe, you know, Doug hurt his foot as well. So me and him are walking at walking into this movie nine twenty a.m. in the morning. He's got a cane, I got a boot on, and I both of us looking at each other, laughing at the, the this scene, walking in to go watch this movie. Um, but um, oh, but overall though, Spider Man Across the Universe, go watch it, man. I cannot wait to own. It. I cannot wait to rewatch it. And part Beyond the Spider Verse is gonna be fucking insane. You know, I I had a really good time, and I'm enjoying to see Miles' journey and seeing Miles being torn down by. Uh, Spider-Man 2099, Miguel, and everything like that. I was just like, ah, and all these Spider-Men in this universe, and, you know, Peter Parker, and Gwen, and everything like that. All these relationships that are building, and twist at the end, where with uh, Prowler, you're like, oh, shit! Because he goes into the wrong universe. And I'm like, fuck, bring it on! I want, And so... I might watch Into the Spider-Verse again. I might do some commentary on Into the Spider-Verse. See? That was some other thing. I was like, man, I want to do movie commentary. Like, exclusive movie commentary for the YouTube channel. But I can't. Because I'm restricted to wrestling. But now I'm not anymore. I, I feel I feel like I'm out of the box. You know, I, and I can't wait to drop more podcasts for you. So, baby, the Sexy Ninja Cast is reloaded and it's aiming at you with some awesomeness and freshness. 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 Hush, 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 coming your way. All right, y'all, there we go. That's the Sexy Ninja cast. I'm back at it uh, like an addict uh, causing panic, uh, bringing damage that doesn't rhyme with panic, but okay, whatever. (laughs) I hope you join me more on this journey, and we're just beginning. All right? Like and subscribe. Share it to grandma. Share it to grandma. Share with the bum down at Walmart. I am KMB, the Sexy Ninja, and as always been a while but i know you're gonna enjoy this stay sexy ninjas whoop, whoop! welcome to the wicked shit